In Black Ops 6, your settings are more important than ever. If you can't come in here and just absolutely lock onto a target and beam your shots, you need to change your settings. And yes, these will be console settings. As you can tell right now, I'm on PlayStation 5, so I got you guys. So let's hop in here and give you the most optimal settings to use on Black Ops 6. These are my updated settings. I've changed a few things around, but first thing is going to be, of course, your edit button layout. I currently play on Tactical Flip. And the reason I play on Tactical Flip is because I have this right here, a PlayStation 5 DualSense Edge, which has paddles on the back. And I have my paddles set to jump and YY are basically triangles, so that way I can go ahead and like YY get myself out of those reload animations. So I have an extra little bit, but I do believe Tactical Flip is the way to play, kind of regardless because I'm gonna be slide canceling a lot, so I have that mapped to, of course, my analog stick. I think it is the best possible button layout to be playing on of course i happen to have my horizontal and vertical stick sensitivity at a six i do truly believe that the best players that play this game the pro players land in lower sensitivity for a reason the only people you see play on a higher sense is some of those warzone guys that play with like a very like high like me like a 20 20 or something like that or even some of the guys that are just why whying around going crazy have the macros they will play in a ridiculously high sensitivity maybe they have like an unlock tool or something like that so that's kind of like a little bit null and void on what their settings are because they probably with the unlock tool have like some type of cheat like you know, like soft aim or something else like that. But a lot, because a lot of those unlock tools do come with that type of stuff. But your horizontal and vertical six sensitivity is hugely crucial. And I've been playing a six, six for a while. I used to plan about an eight, eight back in Warzone one back before, of course, you know, Warzone two came out with MW two. I dialed it back and I found my accuracy being much, much better. So I'd recommend for you guys to do this. Now let's move on down here. Simplified controls is off. Low motor strain is off. You guys don't need any of these settings on unless you for real have like some type of disability or something like that, or like some type of issue with pressing the buttons. That'd be the only reason you'd have any of that stuff on. My L1 ping is indeed off. And of course I'm playing tactical flip, like I said, so I can swap from my L1 R1 and my R2 L2. I really enjoy being able to just press in the top triggers. Of course, I the reason I do this really is because I grew up playing PlayStation Call of Duty. So back on PS3, of course, I just use L1 R1 to, you know, aim in and fire. So I just been kind of stuck with that. And I don't really like using my bottom triggers. I like having to press something in less. It allows me to be quicker reaction time wise. So I'd recommend if you guys to sw uh, to swap to, you know, your, your tactical flip if you guys are not, you know, doing that. It does make a difference, especially if you don't have trigger stopped on the bottom of your triggers. You're going to probably need that. Now we're going down here. I just have controller vibration on and something I've played with on for so long. It doesn't really matter for me. So I feel like completely OK uh, with having that on. The trigger effect is off on my dead zone input. We'll show you guys this right now. We'll show you guys my dead zones so I can test my stick dead zone for you. By testing my stick dead zone, I currently have pretty much a 0% on the left stick and maybe negligibly a 1% on my right stick. So go ahead and test your controller, but the general rule of thumb or the general consensus is that your stick dead zone should be as low as possible. For me, my left stick and my right stick are both at zero. I want it to be as low as humanly possible because Call of Duty is a reactionary FPS. The lower my, you know, my dead zone is, the less time it takes for something to kick in for an action I do on my controller to register in game. It makes a lot of difference so so go ahead and put your left stick and your right stick down to as low as humanly possible as you can start out at like a 0.10 go down to a seven down to a five down to a three down to a zero or a one something like that try to get as low as possible it really will make a difference you'll feel your game being so much more responsive in the movements you make my left stick max however is at a 60. i'm trying to decrease the, the maximum value input that is needed for me to trigger my sprinting and stuff like that so that's why that is indeed at a 60. that's as far as i have to push it for sprinting and everything to kick in it really does help out with my overall movement and my right stick max i mean i don't need to adjust this is all you can leave it at full 99 we don't need to kind of alter any of that all we're really concerned about is basically just our left stick max making sure that when we're sprinting and everything like that we have the full sprint everything at a little bit of a you know tighter angle as opposed to our aiming we don't need to mess with that that's not necessary down to our left uh, our l2 and our r2 normally speaking i have this on a bit of a dead zone just partially because uh, I've been playing with a scuff controller. So normally speaking, I'm on PC, but I got shadow banned just after ranking up some guns. The their report system is great. So I've been normally playing with this scuff controller, which actually has 
uh, four paddles on the back. And due to the nature of this controller and these triggers being basically hair triggers, everything is literally a mouse click. I decided to add a bit of a dead zone to that controller because I was accidentally hitting my stim shot, accidentally throwing my throwing knives or grenades or whatever it was. I was not intentionally pressing the buttons and it would just randomly happen because it was so sensitive. So I have a bit of a dead zone there, but if you don't have any problems with that, turn that down to a zero. You don't need a dead zone. I just do that because I, once again, on this PlayStation 5 controller, have the setting turned all the way up for the hair triggers, or at least, is you know, to make it as slight as possible of a press. So I just have a bit of a dead zone because it's not really gonna matter much for me. Now moving into the aiming tap, this is something you guys definitely have to be like, really cognizant of. They actually altered your aim assist quite substantially here in this game. From about zero to six meters, your aim assist is like a fifth of what it used to be. Around like four to five-ish meters, it'll start catching up and it's not really gonna be noticeable. At those very close quarters engagements, it is gonna be super noticeable. You probably realize that your shot's not nearly as accurate. Uh, MW3 aim assist is like super sticky and it'll like really make it, you know, hard to miss somebody. On Black Ops 6, I've noticed even my aim being like a 5KD player, you know, even on like Warzone and previous games, stuff like that, has been a little bit more shaky at close range for that reason. So let's get here to the sensitivity multiplier. Uh, this is something I'd recommend for you guys to change. So your ADS sensitivity multiplier, mine is at a 0.8. And what this does is that my horizontal and vertical stick sensitivity is at a 6.6. 6. So that means now I get a 0.80 of that 6.6, 6, meaning that my sensitivity is even lower when I'm aiming making it harder for me to get off target in combination with the aim assist. That is something that y'all need to really just kind of dial in. I'd recommend to turn this down. It's a 1.0 default. Turn it down to 0 0.9, 0 0.85, 0 0.8. I mean, even down to a 0.70, but I'd recommend staying within the range of 0.70 to about a 0.90. Not a lot of people should keep this at a 1.0. It is gonna help the mass majority of players out and hit more shots. So there's that. And of course, my ADS sensitivity multiplier focus is at a 1.0. I don't need to change this. It just says set the stick sensitivity while aiming down sights only applies while focusing to steady your aim. We don't really need to alter this. We can just keep this at 1.0. It's not going to make a difference for like 99% of your engagements. You just want to keep this at a 1.0 and be done with that. Of course, your target aim assist should be on. I mean, I don't know anyone that ever turned this off. You just got to keep your aim assist on and your motion sensor advanced settings. We don't need to alter that at all because we're not really dealing with motion sensor stuff. I mean, we're just playing with our controller. We're not having extra BS plugged in or anything like that. I don't, even know how, I don't even know how you'd get extra motion sensor settings, but we don't need to mess with that. Now into the movement tab. This is something that I feel like has been a little bit confusing this year for a lot of people out there. Um, sprint assist or basically your intelligent movement because there's omni movement in this game. There's a few extra settings in here. So we're gonna go in here. Basically your sprint assist should be on tactical sprint assist. You want that, that's like your tactical sprint. You want that because you know you just want to press the stick forward. You have that you're obviously your dead zone set so you can you know, get that fast sprint assist. So you want to be able to have that, um, go ahead and do that. That makes the most sense. So tactical sprint assist, keep that on right there. And of course your sprint delay should be at a zero. Sprint assist sideways on, sprint assist backwards. You can keep that on, that's perfectly fine. But let's move on down here to your mantle assist it should just be on off. I mean, there's no real reason to have this. I mean, mine's just set to mail assist angle tight, uh, but crouch assist should be off. I don't really feel like any of us need that crouch assist. You can hit the crouch button, especially if you're playing tactical. You literally just tap in on your right stick and you'll be able to go under an object. Um, that's how I go prone, do drop shots if I really am going to drop shot. So we don't really need that corner slice. Um, this is not make or break, but personally, I don't really feel like there's as much of a benefit doing a corner slice. I mean, afterwards, I mean, after all, I am going to go play a little bit of Warzone as soon as Warzone, basically I'm calling it Warzone 4, as soon as Warzone 4 comes out. Uh, I don't really think this is going to be that beneficial because I'm going to be slipping, sliding around, doing everything. I don't think corner slicing is going to be huge, but I could be wrong. I just have this off. I really haven't felt the need to utilize it, so I just have that there. Um, your slide slash dive behavior should just be on tap to slide. Um, and I should actually change this down to basically short. Um, a lot of the settings reset anytime you just, I mean, anything just resets. I mean, the game's kind of a little bit weird, a little bit buggy sometimes. Settings reset, but tap to slide if you're going to be slide canceling, which I'm sure if you're watching a settings video, you want to be able to do that. Um, so tap to slide is huge. We don't really need this hybrid or any of this other stuff. Just tap to slide and your slide slash activation delay should just be short. Make stuff you, you know, hold in to go dolphin dive or something like that. It's not a long time to where you can dolphin dive. It just helps with the overall fluidity of your movement throughout the map and making sure you're not holding something too long and potentially dying or something like that. Auto door peak is off. Automatic airborne mantle is on. You can do that on or off. Not going to be huge. 
Um, sprint restore, you want to keep that on. Slide maintain sprint, keep that on. Parachute automatic behavior should be free fall. Mental cancels reload should be on. You want to keep that right there. And your overall movement advanced settings, we can check that for a sec. Uh, but sprint slash tactical sprint behavior should just be on toggle. Auto move forward off. Tactical sprint activation, this is a nice setting right here. You want it to be single tap sprint. You don't want to have to click it multiple times to be able to really get in there. It doesn't make sense. Go and hit single tap sprint. Go for that. Uh, plunging out of water should be either trigger or whatever you want. I mean, trigger or free. And sprinting door bash, you want to keep that on. Otherwise, down here, it's after that's just basically vehicle behavior settings. We don't really care about that. Now for your combat settings here, underneath the course controller still, um, your aim down sights behavior should still be on hold. And you want to keep that right there. Um, your weapon mount activation, ADS plus melee. This everything, armor plate behavior, put apply all. It's going to make the most sense, especially if you're playing just multiplayer, playing like, you know, high value target or HVT. Um, you, and you have plates. I know maybe some people don't really realize that you do have plates and you can read apply those plates. So it is nice to have apply all on. C4 detonation could just be all at once. Um, some of the stuff here doesn't really matter. We can go to the advanced combat settings. Um, and a lot of this is not really going to matter too much. Of course, I mean, you have your inner access reload behavior should be on tap to reload. We are playing multiplayer. Of course, you go to war zone, prioritize interact because that makes the most sense. Um, but for multiplayer tap to reload is where it's at. We don't need sprint cancels reload any of this other stuff down here you just basically have exactly what i got now let's move in here to your black ops 6 graphics settings of course this looks much different than you know obviously pc if you go to display quality there's a whole myriad of settings down here but um you want to have of course your 120 hertz refresh rate on if you're playing on playstation 5 xbox whatever allows you to have the highest refresh rate possible you want that on you want to go check all those settings make sure you have that maybe set your game to performance mode instead of you know graphics performance mode makes a difference you want to have that it looks a lot more smooth eco preset should just be on off don't need that we want to use all the power to power our game and make sure that we have the best possible gameplay experience after that in the quality section motion blur off weapon motion blur off depth of field off um, fidelity cast this is a real nice one it makes your game look a little bit sharper i just have this set to 80 um, this is actually exactly what i run on when i'm playing on pc i do have this set to 80 so there's that and your on-demand texture streaming you can have this at like minimal it's not really going to do a whole lot for you i mean you can just have this set to auto everything like that minimal is basically what's going to be fine it's not going to make a huge difference but i just have it set to that now down to your view this is where it is going to make a difference something you guys should be doing your field of view should be as high as it possibly can go or like 110 115 something like that i don't recommend if you guys have a low field of view that means you're just missing out on stuff that's around you can even see when you're in your settings tab that you can see a lot more of what is around you based on your field of view so why would you not want to see that your ADS field of view should be on affected if this is on independent i'll put this in a perspective for you guys on independent like let's say we're off running 120 field of view we have your general if you have this on independent you have 120 as soon as you ads on your gun you zoom into 80. that's not like that's not good that means you lose 40 fov every time you ads on your gun which is not beneficial we don't need that it also makes your guns feel like they have more recoil just kind of kind of any and all of the above we don't want that i'd recommend to stay unaffected if you kind of are one of those people who plays on independent get used to affected it makes your guns your game everything look and feel so much better seriously um weapon field of view i have this on wide because the weapon looks smaller i don't need my guns to be bigger on my screen i don't need it to take up more of what i'm trying to see in the game like there's a lot of times even when you're reloading where your gun takes up a lot on your screen we don't need that so we're going to keep this on wide so the gun is smaller it still looks perfectly fine it's not going to be puny um third person field of view just have that maxed out vehicle field of view you can have that on default your first person and third person camera movement you want this to be on the least at 50. we don't need default 100 we don't need our camera shaking around being all types of shenanigans that's not useful um inverted flashbang you can keep this on or off i personally think flashbangs are obnoxious in this game and when you get hit with them they are blinding and they do their work for at least a good few seconds it's kind of it's ridiculous i'll talk about this here for a brief sec um because i'm not sure how many people really care but master game volume uh, this is just set at 100. My gameplay music volume is set at zero. But when you have gameplay music, that means whether you're playing public match multiplayer, you're playing Warzone, you're going to have more of, those, like more of that music that's just going to be, you know, making it harder to hear footsteps. And especially if you're playing on your TV, that's even that's worse. 
but even having a headset on, I don't need to hear the in-game music. I don't need it to think, oh, it's an intense moment. Let's start playing music. It's like, no, I'm trying to hear footsteps. You know, I'm trying to win the round. I'm trying to, you know, not die in war zone, something like that. We don't need gameplay music. Um, that's not necessary. It's also, I mean, it's cool, I guess, when you get to a new season, you hear the menu music, but I don't need to hear any of that music in-game. That's just unnecessary. Um, also, my audio mix is just on headphone bass boost. It's not really anything that I need to really go over, but you can run whatever you really want. Um, there's that weird option where you can use like this like upgraded like upgraded audio mix, which I haven't dug into, but that's just kind of that. This is really all the audio settings you need to have. And for our last setting here today, we're gonna be getting into the interface tab. I wanna show you guys something here real quick. It's gonna make your game look better. So I'll just kind of go in here. Uh, basically in the underneath the readability tab, we're gonna go down to color customization. What you're going to do is you can see your HUD uh, color palette. You don't need to change this. You can change this to custom, I guess, if you really want to and make up your own color palette for all your stuff, you, your team, etc. Mine's on default. I find that perfectly fine. I don't really need to change that. What matters is going down here. And so we can have our color filter. We want to actually put that on uh, filter two. We want the color filter to be on both. You can see some of my settings just like aren't really saving. I want that to be on both. And this actually is something that also did change. Um, you want this to be on about 80 to 100 and your interface intensity should be at like 100. You can basically, I mean, you could realistically throw both of these at 100, but filter two is what's going to do the best at making sure your game looks like very vibrant, very crisp. And I really like that. That's like something that's like color in some of these COD games are real dull, real boring. And when you have these settings on, it does make all the difference in the world. So have that. And then we're also going to go over here to the gameplay HUD. So of course you want your minimap shape to be on square. Minimap rotation, you just want that on. Um, everything like that. Radar, we don't need any of that sort of minimap radar back on or off. Compass type can just be minimap. But what you guys really want to have is the HUD presets. So there's a couple options in here. Standard is really good. Also, what I really like is classic. This is really solid. It kind of gives you a bit of a Black Ops 4 vibe. So um, you guys could definitely go for something like classic. But choose one of these other ones that you really want. There's no real right way to do it, but I do think classic and standard are probably your best bet. So I kind of rotate between the two. I think it looks super clean. It gets you a great amount of information on your screen without being like weirdly placed. So standard or classic, whatever you want. Go ahead and put that on there. Don't need to really go in here to the visuals minus. It says my minimap shape is round because I switched it. So you want to go, of course, change that to square make sure you have all that right there but that is going to basically be that that's my updated settings video here on console if you guys enjoyed this video give it a like for the algorithm subscribe notifications turned on check out this other video on screen i'll see you all next time